Millions of farmers in the developing world depend on the cocoa and coffee industries to make a living. They used to earn a decent income, but in recent years, volatile prices have left many farmers, like these coffee farmers in Haiti, living in poverty. At times, the price paid to coffee and cocoa farmers has fallen so low that farmers have been unable to cover even their production costs. Unable to support themselves or their families through coffee farming, many farmers have been forced to abandon their land and migrate to the city in search of work. This threatens the diverse ecosystem preserved by forested coffee and cocoa farms. As abandoned farms give way to deforestation and development, countless species are losing their natural habitats. There are five massive companies who, can, who buy up around half of the coffee beans uh, every year. They exert a massive amount of, of power in the supply chain. They drive prices down to generally small and fragmented producers. They make massive profits for themselves. Now we need to tackle the structure of the coffee industry to ensure that there's a fair go for producers. Oxfam is working to empower growers and producers in the developing world to get a better deal from trade. Through research, campaigning and advocacy, Oxfam is challenging international trade rules so that they are fairer for the world's poorest people. In East Asia and the Pacific, Oxfam is working with growers to improve their crops and get higher prices. One of the most effective ways in which Oxfam is helping farmers work their way out of poverty is through fair trade. Fair trade is an alternative model of international trade, where farmers work much more closely with companies to ensure that their families, their communities and the environment share more of the benefits from trade. By selling to the fair trade market, the cocoa farmers in this cooperative in Ghana are guaranteed a fair, stable price, which ensures that they can always cover their production costs and meet their basic needs. Through fair trade, they've been able to invest in much needed water wells, which reduce the risk of waterborne diseases. The farmers have also invested money into schools to ensure that their children have a good education. This is a daycare centre. It was built by the Papuku Farmers uh, Trust. So the funds that uh, was used to build this school was free from the Fair Trade Premium. And uh, this is a three classroom block with a sleeping place and then an office for um, the headmaster of the school. Many communities have chosen to invest money from fair trade into developing alternative income sources, so they're less vulnerable to unstable international prices. We also engage the farmers, especially the women, in income generation activities like um, the tie and dye and batik. We also encourage them to go into some form of agriculture, that is uh, uh, planting of vegetables and other things that can also give some additional income to them. We also engage them, we give them some loans um, for other activities like trading and that is also really helping the women because uh, during the off-season 
they will have to trade and then also raise some income to support their husband and then their entire family when there is no money from the cocoa. It's not just the community which benefits. Fair trade also guarantees that farmers use environmentally sustainable farming and production methods and many fair trade products are also organic. Coffee farmers in Haiti are also seeing the benefits of selling to the fair trade market. There's a growing range of fair trade products available in New Zealand, including coffee, tea, chocolate and sugar. Sales of fair trade products have increased by 3,400%, making New Zealand one of the fastest growing fair trade markets in the world. More and more consumers are making a difference by choosing fair trade for their homes, their cafes, on their campuses, at their churches, and in their workplaces. Um, a group, um, an Oxfam group on campus, is working to make the Auckland University the first fair trade university in Australasia. And to do this, we have to increase um, awareness about fair trade and have more fair trade items stocked on campus. I think the campaign's been amazingly successful. I think that awareness has grown enormously. The staff, which is currently numbering I think 30, have all found that the values associated with fair trade products reflect the values of our office. Um, we were looking around for opportunities to contribute to how the world is seen from a sustainability perspective and this seemed like an easy and, and, and obvious choice to get started on. We actually had a little coffee trial session and everybody loved them. It turned out to be very easy for us, it was really a matter of which one was the easiest to get supplies of. Being a consumer you have a lot of power and that you can use that power in a really positive way and I think buying fair trade can, can be a positive way to make a real difference in the world. You can make a difference. Choose fair trade products whenever you shop and help farmers in the developing world work their way out of poverty. So the message I have for our guys in New Zealand is to buy a lot of fair trade so that we farmers down south here will get premium to support our income. Through this we can send our children to school. Through this we can live in good houses. Through this, uh, we can take care of ourselves and our family. And through this, we can contribute to the development of the world. This is the message I have for our friends in New Zealand.